Hi and welcome to your lesson on proteins. This is section 2.4 in the syllabus. We will be focusing as we have with the other molecules on the structure and function of proteins. So the objectives for this lesson are to state the monomers of proteins, to draw, to be able to actually draw the formation of a dipeptide through a condensation reaction. So this is a skill, so not only do you need to know how it's formed, but you need to be able to draw it. Describe the primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary structure of proteins and to describe the functions of proteins with named examples within individuals and individuals unique proteome. So let's get started here. Proteins are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and sometimes sulfur. They are long chains made up of amino acids and therefore the amino acid is considered to be the monomer. Dependent on the sequence of the amino acids, the, pro the proteins have a variety of different properties. So we're going to come back to that later. There are about 20 different amino acids and those amino acids vary based on what is known as the R group. So that is what you're seeing in pink here. The amino acid also has two other parts to its structure. On the left hand side, you can see the N with the two H's and that is the amine group. On the right hand side, you can see the C with a double bond to the O and then to the OH. And this is a carboxyl group. And you may recognize this from your studies of fatty acids when you did lipids. When we form a dipeptide, a dipeptide is formed of two amino acids. So the amino acids are the monomers. If we're going to form a dipeptide, it is done via a condensation reaction. So this is very similar if you have done your studies of carbohydrates and lipids. So we take two hydrogens and an oxygen and form water with that. And this leaves a bond to be formed between the carbon on the left hand side and a nitrogen on the right hand side. And when we form that bond, that bond is known as a peptide bond. So because water was produced, this reaction can be referred to as a condensation reaction or dehydration synthesis. The resultant molecule here now has um, two amino acids joined together, so we would now call it a dipeptide. If we were to have more than two amino acids joined together, that would be referred to as a polypeptide. So when we think about a protein as a whole, um, it has a variety of levels of structure. And that structure determines the, the, the functions that the protein is able to undergo. So the primary structure of a protein molecule would be the sequence of the amino acids that are in the polypeptide chain itself. So remember that amino acids can vary according to the R group. So there are named amino acids based on what atom you place on the R group. Dependent on the order of those amino acids, that order is referred to as the primary structure. The secondary structure is a shape resulting from the folding of the primary structure. So it builds on the primary structure and you can form two different kinds of shapes from the original amino acid chain. And those are referred to as an alpha helix or a beta pleated sheet. In order to form these, we have hydrogen bonds formed between the amino acids that cause the chains to fold into a different shape. The tertiary structure builds on the secondary structure. So now we're gonna take the alpha helix or the beta pleated sheet shape and then we're going to fold it further in order to provide a three-dimensional shape. So the best um, image that we may have of this is perhaps if we're familiar with enzymes and the shape of an active site of an enzyme. An enzyme would have a tertiary structure to provide a 3D shape, in their case an active site that they can use for a chemical reaction. Finally, some proteins, not all of them, but some of them will have a quaternary structure. And this simply means that they have more than one polypeptide chain. 
but in such a case as this, each polypeptide chain will have a certain primary structure, secondary structure, and possibly tertiary structure. So this lends itself to a huge array of different structures for proteins. One of the examples that has a quaternary structure is hemoglobin. And hemoglobin is a particular protein um, that carries oxygen around in our blood. That starts to lead us to be considering the functions of proteins. So there are a number and several of them are indeed also specified on your syllabus. So we can use proteins as enzymes. For example, amylase is an enzyme that is found in saliva to break down starch. And also, you may at some point come across Rubisco. If you're studying photosynthesis, it too is an enzyme. We may have proteins as certain receptors. For example, in the eye, there is a light-sensitive protein in the retina of the eye known as rhodopsin. We could have transport, for example, of oxygen, hemoglobin. For movement in your muscles, when you look at muscle structures made up of two proteins known as actin and myosin. Cell recognition would involve proteins that we call antigens. And then if you've studied membrane transport, you will know about channel proteins or protein pumps, such as that um, that involves ATP in order to move sodium and potassium ions. We also have a lot of structural uses for proteins, namely collagen um, that is found in connective tissue. And also spiders make a particular kind of protein and to weave their webs, and that is known as spider silk. Hormones. Hormones are also proteins. Insulin that is used to lower blood sugar levels or blood glucose levels. And then also for protection, whereby we ha might have antibodies in our blood known as immunoglobulins. Every individual has a very unique proteome. And the proteome is considered to be the entire set of proteins for that individual coded for by their genome. 